All right, so let's let's all come back together for just a few minutes. Even though I never, know everyone's having a lot of fun trying to figure out what's going on with this data, but let's let's just talk through kind of what's going on, and then we'll and then we'll go back to it and and think more about sort of what recommend think about it more proactively. Now that we hopefully have an understanding of what's going on, we can talk a little bit about what sort of recommendations we would make. Um, so does anyone want to just share sort of what they thought was going on with the data in their group or problems they ran into? Yeah, please. So I think one of our base problems was figuring out, you know, what was the base unit of evaluation here? Because mm -hmm. uh, that, that seems to be the great place to set up your authority policy if you want to start uh, creating those unique IDs to start linking uh, other pieces of data. And we thought it was the parcel table. Um, but then some of the other data and other tables seem to say, you know, but one parcel can have multiple multiple attributes that, uh, you know, how do you start splitting that up? Mm -hmm. I think what we're looking at was on the wetland survey table. Those first three values, they're all on the same parcel, but they've been assigned three different eco units, maybe four. So that's something that we're mm -hmm. Anyone else? If we were hypothesizing that there are uh, boundaries for the bioreserves and boundaries for the parcels, and that they may not necessarily overlap, that's mm -hmm. why they have like, relationships going both ways. You know, the parcels are going to earn some bioreserves, and the bioreserves have to spend like a minute. Yeah, it's definitely like the the world is, is is a messy place when it comes down to it. That you know, so it seems like what you're saying is, is right that there are there are these bio reserves that that have some parcels in it, may cut across parcels, and then there are also these like the wetland units, which there are multiple ones in parcels and in bio reserves. So it is it is a pretty complicated data set, um, and largely because the parcels are a complicated thing, and college is a complicated thing. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you all kind of got a good, a good sense of, of what's going on. Did anyone see any particular issues that, that jumped out to them as like problems with the data? Maybe um, in terms of the way the data is recorded or also in terms of sort of flatness and uniqueness? Did anyone find a good yeah, please. Well, the way the parcel tables are named, uh, they put the townships in the names, but then the townships don't necessarily line up. So mm -hmm. that seems uh, problematic. Yeah, there's something I realized kind of late last night when I was looking through this, that the data is not completely clean. So I checked these parcels here listed under Bauer. Um, they don't correspond with these, and they actually belong to someone else in a different township. Um, so, so this is something that you know you would have to figure out with the organization. Is it was it actually a survey done on the Bauer property in Linden Township, or is it just mislabeled and it was actually done in like I think it's like Freedom Township where this this actual these parcel numbers are. So there's there's actually no way that, that you could know what the right answer is because it's it's pointing both directions. Um, so so that's that's one one obvious problem. Um, does anyone have any thoughts about sort of the way that, yeah, please. Uh, I was just going to bring up the second one, and it's kind of looking at the, on the assessment table, the very last one, is 21 and 22, you've got Sanford as the property owner, and you've got Sanford second as the second property owner. Mm -hmm. You've got different parcel names and entirely different dates assessed, and I think one of the problems that we were talking about in our group is then, so what was the point of that record? It was obviously a meaning to having entered that record. Was it to add this new parcel to the assessment? Was it to show that an assessment was done? Was it mm -hmm. And then, as a result, the property owner feels the sudden gets like really not standardized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that one is is very problematic to figure out, and because so. They said that their unique identifier is this the site name, the, the county, bioreserve, and then landowner was, was the thing that was unique. 
but it seems almost inevitable that there might be in some of these, and, and I think maybe that's possibly what's going on with the Sanford one, that someone owns two properties in different parts of a, of a bio reserve, and so trying to figure out how to how to record those, I think they maybe did run into some trouble, and maybe that's what this this second, yeah. Yeah, and the minor thing, the parcel number is missing the letter at the beginning, of this. so that's a non-standard parcel number. I think that I think actually some parcels don't have letters. No, no, no. You look on the other sheet. Uh, all well, yeah, the those are. I think it's because the, the ones that start with 16 are actually in a different township. They're not actually the Bauer properties. So, but I think that it might be it's still the right parcel number. It's just not the right parcel number for that landowner or township. But, and then some of them are just missing parcel numbers altogether. Um, My, my understanding, maybe James could speak to this a little bit better, but is that first, it's first in order to assess which bioreserves they're most interested in surveying, so based on some factors about the bioreserves, and then to record the results of the survey. Yeah, they have three levels of um, bioreserve sites based on how concerned they are about maintaining them. It's like, won't we, like, relatively less concerned and more concerned than, like, really concerned or negative to the level of way. Um, and it's further data So another thing that you may have noticed was I just included just a little bit of the data that, that James was talking about. Um, but if you look at the time at site on the wetland survey, um, sometimes it's recorded as like an hour, like 2.5 I imagine is, an, is two and a half hours. But then further down it's 0, 03 colon 30 and then there's the 10 to 12 plus. Um, <laughs> So it's just a little thing, but then it becomes very difficult to do any sort of computation if you want to know the like average time per acre or something. And it might not be something that they're interested in at all, but it's an, it's an easy thing to recommend that there's some sort of standard for that could, could allow for easier analysis. And this is, this is I think, a good example of, of how infer, or data design can, can either stand in the way of moving from collection to analysis or smoothly facilitate moving to analysis. So, so even these small things are, are good to look out for and make recommendations about. Um, yeah, please. Yeah, the problem next to that, it says size and score red. All of the numbers are below 10, actually most of them below 5, except for one, which is 30. Mm -hmm. So is that like a missing decimal point, or is that an actual accurate number? Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, and it could be it could be acres. So we could be looking at you know most of the properties being relatively small, and then that just being a huge property with a lake or something. But yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's definitely good to like to look for those sort of outliers and, and make sure that everything's being put in the same way. It might be that everything else was acres, and that was like square meters or something like that. So no, that's definitely a good point. All right, so why don't you all get back in your groups, and now that we've talked a little bit about how the data is organized, and talk through some different ways that we might think about reorganizing the data. If you have, let me see, I had a slide for this. I'll try and pull it up while you all start working. Um, but just sort of think through what you might do to clean up this data, to flatten it, to make sure that uniqueness is preserved. 
Um, and some of that, I think, with this data set is going to be going, would be going through by hand and figuring out, you know, whether or not this, the Linden Bauer survey was actually on that property or was on another one. But so sort of just think through what it is that you would ask the organization to better clarify the data, and then what sort of structure or changes you would recommend. Oh, and, and one other thing to note that I wanted to just point out. So the parcel one is definitely not flat, you may have noticed. It has parcels with comma. So that might be something you want to think about. And then there's obviously this question about whether or not these site IDs are actually unique, whether the two Linden 604 Bauer is just a repetition or sort of something different. 